good evening and thank you for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Olivia Whitehead. On February 22nd, 1963, JFK was assassinated right here. And while many people come from all over the world to visit this exact location, today is important for a different reason. Well, you guys, it is homecoming here at the University of Oklahoma and decking out the South Oval is no exception. As you can see, the mums behind me are in full bloom and the South Oval is lined up with these homecoming boards just to show how much spirit these Sooners have. Doors have been shut on many fitness facilities due to the spread of COVID-19, leaving gyms like F45 to find new digital ways to engage their clients. It is the first day of fall and people are already coming out to the Norman Pumpkin Patch, taking pictures, getting decorations, and preparing for the season ahead. So grab your pumpkin spice and let's go check it out. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas as the temperature lowers, the decorations go up, and every shopping mall across the country starts to look like a zoo. Now, if you were watching Sooner Football, on Saturday, you probably know the most memorable moment was not OU's victory against West Virginia. In between the pumpkins coming down and the Christmas trees going up is the season of giving. And while most look forward to stuffing their face with turkey, it's also a time to reflect on what makes you thankful. It was a tough game Saturday night, but there were still a lot of smiles in the OU football locker room after the game. That is what I'm most excited about because honestly, I think the hardest part about sitting through that game is that heat. Is the heat. You're time. sitting in a giant tin can heating yeah. up. But <laughs> Last week, we told you about one college football fan raising money for beer. Well, now he's raised more than $1 million. I'm Olivia Whitehead. That's Fox 4 News. Always remember for news anytime, go online to fox4news.com. La La Land Kind Cafe is a 100% organic cafe with a purpose far greater than just brewing a good cup of coffee. Order up. It was never, let's open a coffee shop. It was how can we help the community? employing and mentoring youths aging out of the foster care system. A lot of times when you're in foster care, if you don't have a foster family, you can't have a job because you're moving around all the time. Cleo aged out a year ago, starting with nothing. I was 18 years old. I got kicked out of my foster home because I was 18. I was too old. I was an adult. They didn't want me anymore. I was homeless for three and a half months. But Rohani wanted to change that. It was kind of a moment of realization for me where I could create a place not only that we can hire mentally these youth and be with them every day and see how they're prospering, but really create a business model that shows other businesses around us across our entire nation that as a business we can do a lot more. And that's what they do. We want to give you more than just job experience. We want to give you those life skills. I think we're setting foundation now that it's definitely possible to do and not only possible, it's you end up getting a much better team member than you ever would have just hiring normally, right? These are these are the most passionate team members that you can ever find. And they come in here and they're thankful for the job and they give it 100% every single day. They hope other companies can follow in their footsteps. So youths like Cleo can finally develop their independence. So I now have my own apartment and I pay all my bills by myself. I pay my rent by myself. Like, I did this, like I made it. In Dallas, this is the exciting part. Olivia Whitehead, Fox 4 News. As college comes to an end, applications are submitted, cover letters are written, and resumes are updated. But for ballet majors, the process looks a little different. Hello, it's Katie. I'm here in New York City for audition number six uh, for Festival Ballet of Providence. And I'm headed to the subway right now to go to Brooklyn. So wish me luck. Each week in senior ballet majors like Katie spend a majority of their time traveling to different auditions. I kind of just compiled a list of all of the major and smaller companies that I was interested in across the country and I just started applying, so to speak. I made an entire audition reel of everything I performed here as well as some class work. If companies show interest, they are invited to take a ballet class something they aren't quite strangers to. It's like what we do every single day, except for there's a panel of judges at the front of the room looking, looking at you, and you're just hoping that you can get their attention, basically. Like any art form, judging can be subjective. It helps to just kind of do you, and um, you know, if they notice and like you for that, then that's, that's good enough. While staying on point and dancing outside of the crowd. Kind of try to just kind of let everybody else fall away and I really just focus on me and um, performing and doing what I love to do and showing that I love what I do. And finding a place where you can still grow. I feel like I need a couple more years of that like push and that guidance. 
7 p.m. And what's really hard is when you when you're out of the student environment, when you're not in the school anymore, it's up to you to um, improve on your own and be your own teacher. And um, that is really hard to do when you know you've been in school for so long. Unlike most jobs, ballet contracts only last a year. A lot of the times how that works is I liken it to kind of being an intern um, for a, like a, another kind of job application process. You have to kind of pay your dues and start at the bottom. The process is continuous, leading other dance majors even going on to be administrators, teachers, choreographers, or something entirely different. But for some, the stage is where they want to stay. I just, I just want to dance. <laughs> Olivia Whitehead, OU Knightley.